Right, just a little bit of a show and tell. New products that I have now uh, got into my, brought into my workshop. Uh, first thing, something that I definitely needed. I mentioned it in my other videos where I broke a parting blade. I only had one half left. But, uh, so here's another parting blade, the same as I've been using. It's probably on, I don't know, is it a little bit on the light side because of the chatter and stuff that I've been having? I'm not sure. It's 26mm uh, high and 2mm wide. And I ought also run out of, uh, it's onto my last insert. So I've got a packet of inserts. Uh, these are Kenna metal. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I always thought these were made in the US, but they are actually made in Germany. Um, yeah, so <coughs> that's those. Definitely needed them because I was onto my last setup. What else did I get? Got myself a, a nice little hammer, uh, rawhide and copper, uh, Thor brand. Made in uh, England, I believe. Yes. Um, yeah, nice little hammer just for you know bumping parts into place, so without damaging them. So that was uh, not a bad little pickup. Okay, so I wanted one of these for a little while, and while I haven't had any projects that require them, got myself a sign bar. So it comes in a nice little box. Um, I think this is a <coughs> four inch one or a hundred mil. I certainly need to work that out before I do the calculations. Obviously elephant in the room. Uh, here we have a rotary table. Uh, I did a job recently, what was it? It was the nuts for the arbor, attachment for the universal grinder, in which I had to um, put in uh, some pinholes for the spanner to undo it. Uh, that was, I had to do that with the uh, universal uh, dividing head, which I have, which worked, but it was a little bit ungainly, sat a little bit higher, uh, but it did work, so, you know. But for other jobs now, I've got this 5-inch, uh, 5-inch, 6-inch. Uh, good question. I can't remember. Looks bigger than 5-inch, so it must be 6-inch. And so the next uh, other part that I ordered with it is a nice little chuck to go on it. I could have bought these together as a kit, but the only kits that were on offer were from a cheaper, no-name sort of company, and I preferred to get something with a bit better quality without going completely nuts. So, even though it costs more to buy them separate, that's the way I decided to go. And I also need to now make some tea uh, nuts for it. <coughs> Got bolts here. So bolts go down through and probably may not be picked up by the cameras but there is a, a T-nut slot in three sides and I need to make up some tea nuts because it didn't come with tea nuts. I was going to, I still might, I'm, I'm in an hour only about this. The diameter uh, of the bar required to make the tea nuts is going to be about 25 mil or an inch. This is the smallest piece of bar stock in as far as diameter goes. Well, no, I do have smaller, but that's not, that's too small. So, uh, closest to 25 millimeters without going under is this guy here and he's 40 millimeters 
I have a longer piece of it. It's just an offcut of another job. I have to order some more bar stock. That is the next thing on my list. Uh, I need to get something. <coughs> Basically, I've got 20 mil. I might have a bit of 12 mil, and then I've got this, which is I think 30, 40 might be. Yep, 40 millimeters, and I've got 65. And it seems lately all these things that I want to make are way off these sizes. So I've got to turn down lots and lots of material to get close. Um, oh, and I forgot one thing. What else did I get? I got myself a magnification light. What do you want to call it? Work light? Don't know. You'd <coughs> be familiar with these that were in the, sort of like dentist offices and and the like, maybe at the, uh, you know, your, your safety office, whatever you call it, nurse's station in your workplace, uh, if someone gets a splinter, or, or uh, yeah, there we go, basically it's an LED light with a magnifying uh, glass in it. I mainly got this light for use on the D-bit grinder or universal grinder for when I'm altering drive rollers for welding machines that aren't available with a U-groove for aluminium welding. Uh, I'm finding it difficult to line up the groove with the cutoff wheel. The cutoff wheel is only 1.2 in diameter and you only have one shot at doing it in the right place. So I've got this to use with that. Um, it's quite nifty too. It's, Better design than I thought, in a way, is once you set your angle with the head, it maintains the same. You know, you've lost it out of view, but it maintains, doesn't up and down, doesn't move the plane here, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, so that was my little haul of goodies for the workshop this uh, week. Um, this won't be an every week occurrence because uh, I can't afford to buy that sort of stuff all the time. So, um, I've got a decision whether I make these T-nuts out of this piece of offcut here. 40 diameter, I've got to turn down to 25, so, you know, it's not terrible, but it's a lot of waste. Um, or it means I don't do the project until this steel comes in, so that could be a couple of weeks away. Um, I'll just have to make that decision, I suppose. Okay, so I had this indicator, then I realised so I didn't show it, so I mucked it up again. Right, so, indicate, square section. What you're looking for is the lowest point in the, uh, when you move the rock the piece back and forwards. Okay, so you can see there at about the 25 mark is the lowest point, so to make it easy to track what you're doing. About zero. So, you flip it to the other side, and now we have a look where we are. Lowest point is, what have we got there, about 66. Okay, so needs to roughly be half of that around there somewhere. So that means this side has to come up. So only way for this to come up is for this to be loosened off a bit. Flip it back 180 degrees. You'll probably find it has moved a little bit. No. And let's tighten this down. Okay, so that's not going to be enough, I doubt. But, let's find the lowest point again, there it is there, flick us back to our zero. The zero doesn't matter, it could be any number you like, but it's just easier to see what you're doing if you just move it around to the same place. So 180 degrees again, what are we looking at? The lowest point there is 80, so now we're half, we need to be halfway in between these two. Once again, we still have to come up, up this way a bit, so let's back it off a bit more. 180 degrees. 
Rock it back and forwards. Okay. So our zero's moved a little bit, taking the tension off from the other jaw. Let's put a bit more. Oh, that's probably too far. So let's zero it again. Make sure that is zero. Very close. 180 degrees. Now what have we got? We will close. There we go. Within two pumpteenths. And this is a uh, imperial, so it's what's that two thousandths of an inch. But let's get it closer. Right. So this means that we need to go down. So let's tighten this jaw up a bit more. Sort of about one. Let's see if we're sort of about one on the other 180 degree face. Sort of about one. So, those two faces are centered. Let's have a crack at the other two faces now. So I just turn it a quarter of a turn and we start again. Radio. So the furthest way around we can get to the anti-clockwise. Here's our zero point. Let's flip it 180. Okay, so. We need to come up a good deal on this one. So back it off a bit. Turn it 180. Re zero it. So ready. So it's getting closer. So still needs to come more. So on and so forth until you get it. So not too far away now. Let's try and make this one about five more. So just about on the zero. Just about on the zero, a little bit under. So I could probably just tighten this back one up a little bit more. Zero, zero. Just going to turn down uh, off the square bar here centre section that's going to go up in inside the rotary table and then uh, it'll be, it's 7 mil long and then I'll make uh, take it out and I'll cut it off in the bandsaw another 7 mil first of all though we'll uh, put a hole through here and then whatever the screw the bolt that uh, came with the uh, rotary table mounting bolts whatever that thread is we'll make that thread inside there then cut it off in the bandsaw and then we'll do another nut and another nut. Uh, it's going to be an easy job because this square is perfect size to fit in that slot. So uh, we'll start up. A little bit 
bit too much, probably hanging out of a lathe, out of the chuck. Uh, I was going to do it a different way. Change my mind. I've already indicated it. So we've got what we've got. to uh, putting a center drill into here then uh, I'll be following it through with a pilot drill and then 6.8 millimeter drill which is the tapping size for M8 by 1.25 thread now this section here only needs to be when it's cut off in the bandsaw 7 millimeters long so uh, this piece the uh, round section at the front is also 7 millimeters so I only need to go in uh, with the pilot and the uh, drill, the tapping drill size, 14 millimeters. So we'll start this process. in pilot drill and then follow it through with a 6.8 we'll come back when that's done because I'm going to have to move this tail stock which means this camera is going to go cattywampus the hole is now drilled to receive the tap I have mounted the tap in the tap handle in the lathe with the tail stock and a center. This happens to be a live center, doesn't have to be a live center to start this hole. Um, nice to keep it nice and straight starting hole with the lathe. So not powering the lathe on obviously and in neutral all I'm doing is winding in putting a little bit of pressure on the tail stock uh, hand wheel just to keep it threading in back off a little bit and then we we'll come in again all we're doing is following in behind with the tail stock back it off so on and so forth
So look, that's enough. I will complete that in the vise, being square, it's going to be held in the vise very easily. I'll now take this over and cut this off in the bantle. up when you've got the right stock on hand. Uh, this was a piece of square bar that I had. Just so happened to fit perfectly. Let's see if it actually fits into the slot. Tighten that up, but now I need two more. So, two more to be built. <laughs> 